Let's start out with some applications because you're probably wondering where it's used. So we'll look at some applications from chemistry, geography, and some physics. In chemistry, we'll look at pH of a substance. In geology, we'll look at how earthquakes are measured on a Richter scale. The pictures you see here on the far right. You can see a reading of the seismograph that reads earthquake readings. Uh, you can measure whether something is acidic or alkaline in chemistry using pH formulas. You can measure the sound decibel in physics using logarithms. So let's see what these applications are. Whether a substance is acidic or alkaline or basic, as it's called in chemistry, is measured by the hydrogen ion concentration in the substance, the unit that's used to measure this is moles per liter. So pH is negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is denoted as square bracket and a H plus. So for example, pH of water is seven and it's considered neutral, or in other words, it's neither acidic nor alkaline. However, orange juice is acidic and has a pH of 3, whereas sweet corn is basic or alkaline and has a pH of 8. What does that pH of 7 mean? It means that there are 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter of hydrogen ions in water. That's what that means. That's why you can see why there's a negative in front, because that way our pH is always a positive number. Nutritionists are always talking about how, in order to reduce the risk of cancer, you may want to eat more alkaline foods in your diet. Alkaline foods are also defined as foods for which the ash that remains after combustion produces a pH greater than 7 when dissolved in water. So fruits and vegetables, most of them are typically alkaline foods. In this example, the geologists measure earthquakes using Richter scale. Uh, Richter scale is given by the formula log I over I sub zero, where I sub zero is the baseline reading 0 0.001 millimeter, and I is the intensity or amplitude of the earthquake in millimeters. When there's an earthquake, there is movement in the Earth's crust, and so those waves are go up and down the distance from rest to the highest point of the wave is called the amplitude of that wave. So when you have a reading of 3 on the Richter scale, it means that the vibrations felt are similar to when a large truck is driving by. But a Richter scale reading of 5, that means it's like a 500 ton TNT explosion. Now even though the Richter scale number is only too high, remember it's base 10. So it's really 10 to the second or 100 times more intense than Richter scale reading of 3. So the earthquake that hit Japan in 2011 was 9 on the Richter scale, which is so powerful. Remember, it's 10 to the ninth. That's what you were looking at. It was so powerful that it actually knocked the Earth's axis so that days on Earth shortened by 1.8 microseconds. In this example, the sound level, how loud a sound is, is measured as 10 times log. Again, it's I over I sub zero, where I is the intensity of sound in watts per meter squared. And I sub zero is the baseline sound that humans can hear, which is like a whisper, like 10 to the negative 12th watts per meter squared. So decibel number 60, it means that the Noise level is such similar to when you are like in a crowded restaurant. That's what decibel level 60 would be. But a decibel level of between 130 and 150 is like a jet taking off. They've done studies that show that high intensity ex sound exposure actually can lead to hearing loss. So actually when people go to loud concerts or work at the airport and so on. OK, let's recap what we have so far. So the notation is log base A. 
that represents the name of the inverse function of the exponential function y equals a to power x. You read that as log base a of x, not log a times x or something else. Log base a of x. You could also say log of x base a. That's allowed too. And you remember, inverse function undoes the original function and vice versa. So log base a of a to power x should be x. And a to power log base a of x should also be x. Also important is being able to go back and forth between exponential equations and logarithmic equations. Exponential equation is y equals a to power x. And x equals log base a of y is the logarithmic equivalent form of that exponential equation. Another way to see that is take a look at this. So if you have y equals a to power x, you can go back and forth between logarithmic function, and then you can go back to exponential function. So when you get rid of the exponential function, the left-hand side inherits log base a. When you get rid of log base a from the left-hand side, you will inherit a to power x on the other side. So you can see how you can go back and forth between the two, logarithmic and exponential equations. Pause the video here and do the following examples. Identify base, exponent. This will allow you to change exponential equations into their logarithmic form. Go ahead and do that. Pause the video here. And only when you are finished, continue the video so you can check whether you got your answers right. Assuming you've come back, here are the answers. Check what you got. Did you get them all right? So 2 is the base, 3 is the exponent, and so we have log of 8 base 2 is 3, or log base 2 of 8 is 3 on the first one. Second one, base 2, exponent negative 3, log base 2 of 1 eighth is negative 3. Base is 2, exponent is x, log base 2 of 10 is x. And you can read for yourself and see if you got them right. The last two, base is a, exponent is x plus y. So the other side will become log base a of u times v is x plus y. And similarly, x minus y is log base a u over v. This is actually telling you what is happening here log of a product turns into an addition. Log of a division turns into a subtraction. That's a possibility, so let's go look for properties of logs in a little bit. Pause the video and see what you can do on this one. So this time you are given logarithmic equation and you're going backwards. Again, identify base, identify exponent, and then rewrite it as an exponential equation. So we'll do first few. Log base 3 of x is negative 2. So you are saying base is 3, exponent is negative 2. So 3 to the negative second is x. Here there's no base, which means it's base 10 in part b. So 10 to the fifth power is equal to x plus 1. So base is 10, exponent is 5 and you can check the rest on your own. All right, go ahead and compute these. We've done some of them a little bit before, so you can do them on your own and check them. So again, if you're stuck, uh, let's say on part b, a quarter squared is 1 16th, but you want 16, so it has to be negative 2 to get the reciprocal. Natural log means in part f, base e. So e to the second power gives you e squared. So that's why this is 2. So let's look at some properties of logs. We have 
a to power x times a to power y is a to power x plus y. These are properties of exponents. When you do division, you subtract exponents. When you do power a to power x to another power of n, you multiply n times x as the power, and a to 0 power is 1. So let's see how these translate into properties for log, since log is the inverse function of exponential functions. If you are looking at x equals log base a of u and y equals log base a of v, that means a to power x is u and a to power y is v in exponential notation. So if you look then, our exponential equation is a to power x plus y equals uv, which means if we rewrite it in the logarithmic form, we'll get x plus y equals log base a of uv. And then just replace x and y for what they were, which was log base a of u plus log a base log base a of v. So here what we have is log of a product is the sum of the two individual logs. Similarly, log of a division is the subtraction of the two individual logs. Log of something to a power, the power n will come in front, and so it will be n times the log of u base a a to power 0 is 1, so log of 1 base a is 0 for all a greater than 0. And a to power 1 is a, so log base a of a is 1. These are important properties because they will allow you to go simplify some complicated logarithmic terms. As you saw, we can evaluate log base, like say 2, as long as the input for the log function is a power of 2. If you wanted to evaluate log of a value that is not the power of a base, you can use log base 10 or natural log and then use your calculator. Or we can estimate. So we can convert log of one base to log of another base, which will allow us to compute log base 2 of, say, 3.1. And let's see how to do that. So we are going to study something called the change of base formula. The change of base formula says that if you have a log base a of a u, then you can replace the base a with log base b. But then you have to divide by log base b of a. a is the original base. So for example, log Base 2 of 3.1, if we use base 10, would be log 3.1 or log 2. If we use base e, would be natural log 3.1 or natural log 2. That's how you use the change of base formula. So let's see why this formula works. So why do you think that works? Let's take a look. If you let x be log base a of u and z be log base b of u, then writing it in exponential form will give us u equals a to power x, or and also u equals b to power z, which means that a to power x is equal to b to power z because u is the same as this u here. And so if you take both sides log base b, then a to power x log base b of a to power x should be the same as log base b of b to power z because log base b is a one-to-one -one function. And so when you do that, remember, we just learned properties that exponents can come and sit in front. So that's why this x came and sat in front, this z came and sat in front, and now you have log base b of b, which is 1, because b to power 1 is b. And so now if we solve for x, you have x equals z over log base b of a, or we basically just got our change of base formula by substituting x as log base a of u. So all of these properties of logs that we just studied, they are only valid in the domain of the logarithmic function. Please keep that in mind. Now, how is this useful to us? It's useful when we simplify complex logarithmic equations into a few single terms. But before we can proceed, 
Let's just review so that you recognize what not to do. So log base A of a sum is not the log of A base U plus log of A base B. In other words, you cannot just multiply throughout and distribute the log across addition because log base A is a function. And in fact, it's an exponent. And so the rule that we have is that if you have a log base A of a product, then that would turn into log base A of U plus log base A of V. So log of a sum is not the sum of the log. Similarly, log of a subtraction is not log of something over log of another thing. What you should remember it as, log of a quotient is the difference of the two individual logs. Similarly, if you have log of base A, log base A of u to power n, that is not the same as log base A of u, the whole thing, to power n. Because log base A u to power n is log base A of u times u times u times u. In fact, what that would mean is that it's n copies of log base A of u. Whereas log base A of u, the whole thing to power n, is log base A of u times log base A of u n times. So there's a very big difference between the two. All right, let's take a look and see how to do these examples then. So go ahead, use properties of logs to combine the log terms into one logarithmic term with no coefficients and assume that all variables take on values so that the quantities below are well defined. So go ahead, pause the video here and see what you can do. All right, assuming you've tried, let's take a look and see what the answers will be. So we have log base 2 of 7 plus log base 2 of 9. It's two separate logs, same base, added together which means we can combine them as one log base 2 term of 7 times 9, which will give you log base 2 of 63. Similarly, log base A of R minus log base A of S would equal log base A of R over S, the quotient. Again, C is the sum, so that will make it a product. D is subtraction, so make it quotient. N times log base A of R would be log base A of R to power N. Same thing with F, 6 will become the power. Now in G, you can see the first thing you have to do is take care of powers. So 6 will go to the power of X, 3 will become power of Y, and then there's an addition, so you would have to multiply X to the 6, Y to the 3rd. So it'll be log base 3 off X to the 6 times Y to the 3rd. In the H, log X, and then half is a coefficient. That coefficient will go to the top and make it x to power 1 half. And x to power 1 half is square root. 3 times log y, which means it's log of y cubed. So then negative 2 log z. So it's literally log z squared and a subtraction. Subtraction means quotient. All right, see if you can do the i here. Good. 4 is the exponent of x. 1 third is the exponent of y. And it's a minus, so it's going to be division. The 2 is the coefficient of z. It's a minus, so it will be in the quotient, in the denominator. And cube root, 1 third is cube root power. Here you're doing the opposite. You are given one term of log, and you are going to separate it out so that you have one log term separated into several log terms, and it, each log term should only have one variable. So let's do the first one together, and then you'll do the rest. We have natural log x to the fifth, y to the seven, which will give you x to the natural log x to the fifth plus natural log y to the seven, which will give you 5 natural log x plus 7 natural log y. 
in B, you have x to the 7, y to the 3rd, and cube root of z. So it'll be log base 3 of x to the 7. The 7 will come and sit in front. Plus log base 3 of y to the 3rd. 3 will come and sit in front. And then the cube root of z is in the denominator. So you will have to subtract it. And the 1 third power will come and sit in front. And you'll have log base 3 of z. OK, in part c, we have log of x to the fifth divided by square root of z to the seventh times y to the third. So x to the fifth, so that 5 will come and sit in front. Square root of the whole bottom means it's 1 half power, so the 1 half will come and sit in front. Inside, now we have z to the seven, so the seven will come and sit in front. And then times, so a plus y to the third, so the three will come and sit in front. OK, now distribute that negative half across this parentheses, and we'll have negative 7 halves log z minus negative a uh, minus a 3 halves log y. In this next one, we have log base 1 half, and we have x to the power 6. So that 6 will come and sit in front. Square root of 7, it's multiplied, will become plus log base 1 half 7 to power 1 half because it's square root, and the 1 half power will commence it in front. Now you have a division, so that means subtraction. And in the division, the quotient itself is a product, so that will have to separate as a plus. So log base 1 half of 5 plus log base 1 half of z squared, and that square power will commence it in front. That minus sign now belongs to both. So expanding it out, you'll see that that means that all denominator terms get a subtraction sign. And that's because of negative exponents. Remember that? All right, this next one, you have log base 2 of a product. So it will separate as log base 2 of 4 minus x plus log base 2 of x plus 2. All right, in this next one, you are asked to fill in the blanks to make the statement a true statement. So pause the video here, and let's see what you got. Go ahead, pause the video and try it. Use the properties that we've just been working with. So here we have a subtraction, which means that whatever you put in the blank, 12 divided by that blank should give you a 4. So that blank must be 3. Next one, it's log base 6 of 5. So you have log base 6 of 5 plus log base 6 of 8 plus means product. So 5 times 8, 40. So that blank would be 40. In part C, you have natural log of a blank. So that means that negative 2 power should come as an as a exponent for 3. So 3 to the negative second, which is 1 ninth. So that blank is 1 ninth. In the part D, you have log base 3 of 16 equals blank times log base 3 of 2. 2 is to the power of what? To give you 16, and that would be 4. So that 4 will have to come and sit in front to make that statement a true statement. E is the change of base formula. Do you recognize it? Log base 10 of 5 over log base 10 of 6. So that would be log base 6 of 5. Now that you understand how to work with log and exponential function, let's make sure you know how to enter things in the calculator. So get a scientific calculator to evaluate the following. In a scientific calculator, you should see a ln or natural log button and a log with no base, which is log base 10. So go ahead. Make sure you put parentheses in the right places to compute, and then check your answers with what we have here. Go ahead, do it, pause the video, and go ahead and enter things in calculator to make sure you know how to use a calculator. All right, let's see how we do that. So we have the first one is natural log 1.04. So natural log parentheses for some calculators may come. Otherwise, you'll have to put the parentheses. 1.04, and then Enter, which will give you the answer of 0 
too if you want to round it up. Next one is asking you to compute. So make sure you clear all, then divide it by. Please make sure you put a parenthesis, otherwise you will have a mistake. Four times log one plus 0 0.05 divided by four, close parenthesis, another close parenthesis for the denominator equals. And again, if you want, you can round it up to the two decimal places or whatever decimal places you are being asked to round it to. Next one, log five divided by log three. And then the last one is asked you to compute log four, log base five of four. You can see there's no log base five here. So we're gonna have to use this, log base 10 or natural log. So you can say log four divided by log five. Some of you might wonder, well, what if I don't wanna use base 10, I use log base E or natural log. The answer is should be the same, so let's take a look. Natural log four divided by natural log five. You can see it's the same answer. So again, after the calculator, here are the answers rounded to the nearest hundredth because that's what we were asked to do. So hopefully you are now comfortable with logarithms, exponential functions, and using it on the calculator. So hopefully you are now comfortable with the logarithmic and exponential functions and also to be able to use the scientific calculator.